Hi, welcome to James Miller Lifeology, where you learn to simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. My name is James Miller. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and a composer. Thank you so much for joining with us today. Let's get started. Did you know that on jamesmillerlifeology.com, you can enroll in the academy I created for listeners just like you? I've created courses you may take at your own pace, which will help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. Enroll in one of the classes today. I have a great show for you today. I'm going to help you accept diversity in others. I'll also be interviewing award-winning photographer Jason Dowd, who shares how he exposes racism, as well as help others encourage the diversity in others through his photographs. You may see all of his photographic collections at imaginationartstudios.com. I have some exciting news. Did you know that I'm on the radio three times a week? You may hear me on this same station on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m., Fridays at 9.30 a.m., and Saturdays at 12.30 p.m. You may also hear me on iHeartRadio, as well as on all the other major podcasting platforms, such as iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and many others. Simply search for the show name, James Miller Lifeology. You all know me as a psychotherapist, but some of you may not yet know me as a composer. I currently have two albums which have been released. Think of both albums like books. Each original composition is written like a chapter in a book. The first album, Consolation, explores a character's grief and loss. And just like in any book, the story explores a character's heartache and eventually he finds healing and hope. The second album, Restoration, explores a character's personal development. He has an awakening, and in that awakening, he recognizes all the things in his life which aren't healthy, and it helps him come to a place of restoration, being restored to something greater than before. You may purchase both albums on iTunes or any other digital music store. The names of the albums are Consolation and Restoration, and my stage name is James S. Miller. The name of the piece you are currently hearing is from the second album, Restoration, entitled Awakening. A quick example of one of the courses you'll find in the Academy entitled Spirit, Mind, Body, The Perfect Triad. This non-religious course helps you understand how your intuition, or rather your gut, your logic, and your body all work together to help you overcome any obstacle you may face. Enroll in the class today. Accepting Diversity We all like to think that we're very accepting of others and allow other people in our lives, even if they don't think or come from the same background that we have. Unfortunately, we all have some type of stereotyping or global labeling that happens in our life. And global labeling is essentially one person does something to us, and then whatever characteristic that stands out the most to us, all of a sudden that characteristic is then labeled on everyone else who has that same characteristic. For example, for some people, it's their skin color. For some people, it's the country from where they come. For others, it's the types of food they eat. For others, it could be their socioeconomic background, their education, their religion. There are many different things that happen in our lives that if we never figured out or really understood what happened, we will automatically think that other people who have similar attributes like that are exactly the same. In social psychology, there's what's called the law of the group, which essentially means that the people with whom you associate, you will act just like them. Conforming to what that group norm is will determine how you think and what you do. If you're continually around the same type of people who are very similar to you, your thoughts and your actions are going to be very similar. One of the reasons why diversity is so important is because when you're around people who may think differently than you, believe differently than you, who have a different way of life, it allows for you to grow and develop yourself. When you can talk with people and understand from where they come and their way of life, it helps you appreciate what you have, or it helps you really appreciate what they've gone through, what they've experienced, and how they've become the amazing person that they've become. When I was an undergrad, I had the opportunity to travel to many countries. And I'd been out of the country a little bit as a boy. But when I was in university and traveled to so many different countries, I was blown away with the national pride that each one of those countries had. Meaning, every country felt that they were the best country ever. Every person that was there was proud of their country, was proud of everything that happened, for the most part, of course. But in seeing that, it really helped me be aware that what I was taught as a child about my country being the best country ever was exactly what those people were taught. And it was such an eye-opener for me when I thought about that because I thought, wow, I guess their country is just as great as mine. And that may sound like a silly observation, but when you're not aware of something or when you're not exposed to something, your belief system is limited. 
I remember as a little boy, I read a story about a little frog who was in a well. And he thought his world was so expansive because he was surrounded by water. But one day he was able to climb up and he saw that the well was next to a lake. And so he hopped over to that lake and was so overwhelmed because he had no idea that there was so much water around him before. He swam through that lake and then he came across the ocean and he was once again blown away that there were so many amazing things out there that he had no idea. But the reality is he never would have experienced that had he not left that well. That's the same type of thing when it comes to our diversity. These differences that each one of us have really unify us to help us grow and develop into the person we could become. But when we get stuck in that law of the group, we will always think, feel, and do the same things and we'll never truly reach our highest potential. That's why diversity is so important. When you look at the differences in other people, that can really be literally in your own household as well. Often many of us use the color of one's skin or even one's religion to determine how different we are. But when we really stop and think, we're all different. Yes, unfortunately, the world is divided up into races. And in that, that's where a lot of segregation has happened. That's where a lot of evil things have happened in our world. My challenge to you today is, why don't you talk with the people or interact with the people who may be different than you? What does their difference have to do with you? How would that rub off on you? How does that change you? When you truly believe who you are and you're comfortable in your own skin, how could anybody else's way of life or just who they are, how would that change you? It doesn't. So why would you not want to get to know someone and allow them to be them? Pretend you live your life in a hula hoop. Anything inside of that hula hoop is you. Anything inside the hula hoop of another person is them. When you bring those hula hoops together, neither one of you are inside the other one. So then why would you not interact with these people? Why would you not get to know them? And one thing to consider is sometimes when we're self-righteous, other people view us as different. So when we live this self-righteous world, with the people around us, we will never reach our highest destiny. So in order for you to grow and develop and stretch and learn and be creative and all the amazing things that comes with being around these people and understanding them allows you to be the person that you were destined to be. But if you continually stay with those same individuals with whom you always associate, you'll never live a full, balanced and cultured life. You may never understand the differences in the people around you, but you do need to respect the people around you. One's belief system doesn't have to change yours. But the respect and the acknowledgement that another person has just as much value as you changes the world. Respect the diversity in others. Did you know that I have a YouTube channel? (laughs) That's actually how Lifeology started. I have well over 150 episodes that I've created specifically for you. I do know many people struggle with listening to a full 30-minute show. So these YouTube episodes are about three minutes long. Each episode teaches you one simple lesson that you can practice daily, which will help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. Simply go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com, and subscribe to my YouTube channel there, or go to youtube.com and search for my name, James Miller Lifeology. Jason Dowd is the owner of Imagination Art Studios. He's an international exhibiting, an award-winning photographer, and he's working on a new photographic series called Our Beautiful World. He is the host of the AME radio show about art, music, and entertainment. He is passionate about art and backs a few good causes along the way, like the National MS Foundation and the ASPCA. Welcome to my show, Jason. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's such a pleasure. My listeners don't know this, but I had no idea. Your PR person reached out to me and I was like, wait a minute, is this the Jason Dow that I know? I had no idea that you do all these amazing things. So I can't wait to talk to you about all this. Yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. I love it. And this is just something I've been passionate about and I want to change the world. And even if it's one person at a time. Exactly. And it sounds like what we'll, we'll get to that in just a few minutes is that as far as the new thing you're doing about racism as well. I, I can't wait to talk with you about it. But before we get started with that, I want to find out how did you even get into photography? How did it resonate with you as a child? Well, you know, I had one of those little 18 millimeter cameras back in the day with the, the flash cubes on it. And oh, wow. one of the things that I used to have, I used to have like this WWF wrestling ring and I loved wrestling. And the way that we had our basement, our stairs kind of went upwards and and right at the end of the right at the end of the stairs there, it kind of looked like an arena. So I used to put my my wrestling ring there and I would wrestle with it. But what I did is I took my stuffed animals and put them all on the stairs to make it look like it's like it's an actual stadium arena. So what I did was I started to take I I had an idea. Well, let me take a picture of the, the wrestlers in the ring and then make it look like it's cascading out into the into the public because I saw my own pictures that I did when I went to my own wrestling. And I was like, you know something? That was really cool to do. And my parents were like, how, you know, you're only, you're only five, six years old. How, how, did, how, did you, how did you manage to do that? And I said, well, it's just I wanted a different concept. I wanted to see how it was going to look this way. 
like I did when I went to a retro wrestling. So it made me feel like I was actually doing something, you know, real. And uh, then I started taking out pictures every time we went somewhere. I took pictures of everything. I went to the Catskill Game Farm and took pictures of the Petting Zoo. I went, we went to Old Sturbridge Village up in Massachusetts. And I just loved it. It was just something that I absolutely loved to do. And then I started to play with my dad's Hasselblad. And he's like, uh, 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 you're not doing that. <laughs> you know, it's very expensive. So what we did is he got me another, he got me another camera, a little bit better camera. And I started taking pictures there. And it was in high school when I really, uh, I was kind of, I went to San Diego. And we were, me and my grandfather were going across the mountain by the Al Cajon River, or where it was once the river. And it was now where the Padres and the char- and the Chargers had played back in 1995. Oh, and okay. like, wow, what a great shot. So I leaned over the mountain, literally, I mean, it was, just, it was a cliff. Oh, and I took, this, I took this awesome picture, and it won first place in the uh, so Mike Bilirakis Congressional Art Show. Wow. It made, it made me realize this is really what I want to do. So then I started getting a little bit more ex- extravagant and I started hanging off lots of different things. Oh, I should be hanging off of, and I oh, got goodness. some great pictures. I mean, one of the things that I did is I went on top of this roof. Now, if you know the Tampa Bay area right now, there's the Ice Palace, which is now the Amelie Arena where the lightning play. And right behind it, there's this absolutely huge, um, it's, a, it's a huge hotel. Uh-huh. And I convinced them to let me go up on the roof so that way I could take a picture from basically the I-4 corridor all the way over to Davis Island and towards the St. Petersburg area. Oh, wow. And I was out on this ledge probably about 300 feet up. Literally, my, my, my feet and my toes are dangling over the side. Oh, my though gosh. Is, though it is, though it is, <laughs> this holding me up there is, is, my, is my foot about midway down, and I took these beautiful pictures. And the guy's like, you're not going to jump, are you? I said, believe me, I don't want to ruin this camera. <laughs> <laughs> so... I uh, I took these pictures. It was a, it was a really neat panoramic because I did they didn't have panoramic really back then uh, when I started doing this. So it started to to try to it, it's it's merged now into into where you're able to do that. I wouldn't have had to do it this way, but I had to take six different pictures and keep them on the same plane and just keep oh, going. Wow. So that really kind of brought that out. And then I started getting into I I, I lost my job as a drafter, went into actually taking pictures at the picture people and then i started to take some really creative pictures off of that and they didn't like it because i didn't do this the 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 five pictures that Standard everybody used to. yeah <laughs> yeah and and I, i'm like dude I, i'm so much this is so much more creative and i was selling 14 1500 packages oh wow so, and since i did i wouldn't do their standard package they decided to let me go so i got let go and i started my own studio and then after i started doing that i started doing headshots and weddings and stuff like that until uh, I had a near-death experience in 2009. And that's kind of when all the symptoms of MS started to come out. I didn't know what they were, but they thought I had like a 20-year flu. So I started not being able to do the weddings like I used to, but I started getting into the art. And when I had that near-death experience, it completely changed my view on a lot of different things. I saw saw life completely differently. And that's where I started out my art collections. Wow. You know, it just reflects on that. First off, thank you so much for sharing your story. It sounds like it was, it's amazing. It's so interesting to hear you talk about how, you know, you, ha- you got all these great pictures, but you did it with, with risk, if you will. You know, oh. it's, um, you know, you're literally hanging off buildings. And I think that's, that's a really parallel, a uh, great lesson there as well, that beauty and success comes with risk. There are things mm-hmm. that we have to do that most people wouldn't do. And of course, we want to be safe, but in that, that comes with risk. And that's how you become the amazing person that you are today. That's true. Everything, everything worth of value comes from a little bit of risk. And if you don't, if you're not scared of your dreams or scared to accomplish what you need to do, then it's not big enough. Yeah. And I keep going by that all the time. And, uh, you know, it's through those experiences that made me a more well-rounded person. Uh, I've been more open-minded because of the fact, like I said, I had a near-death experience and I see things differently. And I, I, I took what I used to think is junk and an eyesore and started looking at it differently. Cause I'm like, when I, when I almost died, I'm like, you know what, what where's my story? What mm. type of story am I going to have? Yeah. What's what your legacy? Yeah. Have? Yeah. And so I'm, I kept going with that and I'm like, you know what? I got I got Everything has a story. I got to tell my story. And so I started looking into things like urban decay, you know, some of these old broken down buildings and you see these, these gorgeous um, pictures of, carnivals that have just been in amusement parks that are abandoned and they're run over they're run down you see these old mining towns and i'm like you know what there's so much inspiration because what if walls could talk 
Mm-hmm. Could you imagine the stories that these places have and we're just tearing them down? I'm like, we got we, we got to tell their story. And just because it may look like an eyesore, I'm trying to take that into something beautiful yeah. and turn it around. Well, I think that's the thing. Every, everything in life has a reframe. Just because we see it one way doesn't mean it's always that way. You know, I always like to tell people, you know, think of your life like a Rubik's Cube. You know, on a Rubik's Cube, you, you can look at it six different ways. And if we only look at something the same way all the time, then we're always going to do the same thing. We're not going to grow and develop. So I love to hear that you kind of use that reframe for yourself. Like that Rubik's Cube, you spin it, you spin it around, really capturing the different story and the different viewpoints that other people may not see because one person may just see a rundown amusement park, but you see the beauty, you see the, the a completely different version of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it takes a trained eye to do that. And everybody keeps saying, you know, because I, I try to take, a, I, I actually have a big love of horror and stuff like that. And that's really what I kind of got into. I had all these nightmares when I was a kid. And some of these things that I should just never have had, even at the age that I was at. Oh, goodness. Like, what, <laughs> Like one of them, I was buried in a casket. I knew exactly what it was like to be buried. And I could, hear, I could hear everything. I could smell everything. I knew what it was like. And that started when I was five years old. Oh, my gosh. First, kids in first grade don't even know what death is. Yeah. So I, how was I able to do this? And, and stuff like that, just weird things that affected different people. And then I had one of my friends that committed suicide. Mm. And I had all these dreams popping up. And I believe it was a message. And that's really where my first series, the uh, Dreams, Nightmares, Fears, and Fantasies came from. Because what I did is I took my dreams and I took things that that were interesting to me that I didn't quite understand. Some of it's beautiful. Some of it's a little bit more macabre. But regardless, well, that's life, though. Tell a story. Yeah, that's right. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted a balance. And that was something I didn't have in my life. And it was the one way I could take control of that. You know, too much good is not good. Too mm-hmm. much bad is not good. But if you have an equal form of good and bad together, they balance each other out and you have a more balanced life. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we're going to accomplish. Well, you know, and taking it from a psychological standpoint, if, if people think I always have to, you know, I always have to have success in my life. I always have to be in the mountaintop. Well, that's not sustainable for one. And that's just not life. You know, even you look at the seasons, you know, all four seasons that we have, there's life, there's rebirth, there's decay, there's, uh, there's nothingness, if you will. And that's just life. And so I, I love to hear how you really have that, that juxtaposition or the balances of that. I unfortunately have not seen the Dreams, Nightmares, Fears, and Fantasies series, which I would love to see. So I'm definitely going to check that out. And we'll talk about where my listeners can find out and see more information about, um, about you as well. But let's switch over to your next one, uh, the Steampunk Collection. Tell me about that. I love steampunk and really I love the Victorian era. I love pinup too. Mm-hmm. And I started, I started looking at the Hollywood noir type of photos, like with the, the Gene Kelly's and the, uh, the Betty Davis and all that other kind of stuff. And I was like, you know, that's really cool. Then as I started getting into the vintage photography and I started collecting old types of tin types and cart de vist and all these other, other styles of photography that came along throughout the years. And I'm like, this is so cool. I love the way that they dress. I'm, this is history right in my hands. Yeah. And then I'm like, but I still like that more gothic type of feel to it. And one of the, the happy medium between that is steampunk. And then what I was able to do is I may, I'm actually able to tell a story using really intense costumes. And one of the things that I was doing is I was walking around through Epcot and I ran into an Italian mask store. I love masks. And mm-hmm. what was really cool about it is these are handmade masks. And I started working with the people there and I was getting these masks and taking pictures of them and using it as a mystique. I like to have that mystery behind mm-hmm. it. That's amazing. You, yeah. you know, the mask, you don't know what, what's behind it. What are they hiding? Yeah. What do they look like? You know, I mean, but you can see the eyes. And I always shoot for the eyes when I do any type of photography because the eyes are the one part of the body you cannot lie from. Mm-hmm. The only way that you can t- try to lie is to look away. And then everybody knows instantaneously you're lying. But it's a direct, <laughs> it's a direct passageway to the heart yeah so i always use that to capture the story and with the mask so you can see you can see the emotions in their eyes but you can't see everything so it allows me to have that steampunk feel to it but still give you that mystique so you can come up with your own concept of what's going through their heads and where their emotional well-being is mm. at but i did one that was the pied piper i did one that was a a, a dancer you know the dancers that just mm-hmm. exhaust themselves she's exhausted but she's still gorgeous yeah, and you I can saw tell that it's beautiful you can tell all those things through her eyes and then i have one that was um i have one that was from russia we did like a ukrainian type of thing where she goes from rags to riches uh i did a magician and I've done a few other ones, and it's a really cool feel. And now those pictures are actually 
at Epcot at the store. And if you ask for them, they'll show them to you. Oh, that is so neat. That's wow. Cause I was reading that in your, in your bio. I was like, God, oh, that, that's amazing. That is so neat. What is, so the next one you've been doing now or the one you're really working on is our beautiful world, right? Our beautiful world. Yes. This is something I've been really passionate about because throughout year, throughout the years, I always wanted to learn about my own background mm-hmm. and find out that I was actually a, uh, everybody said that we were Irish and English. And I'm like, well, that's not necessarily true because our last name is Irish and my dad's last na- last name and my, and my grandpa and, and my grandmother's last name were both Irish. And I'm like, well, how did we come from England? And I realized that we, we were merged down there and we came from England on a different route. Hmm. So um, we're not actually English at all. And then I realized that my, gra- my mom is 100% German. And I started doing a little bit of research about my back history. And I'm like, you know, I got to see all the, the food. I got to see the clothes. I got to see the traditions. And I started sit- thinking to myself, what about all these other countries? And I realized that there's 195 countries in this world, which is a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, I didn't realize that when I was reading that. I was like, oh, my gosh, I, didn't, I had no idea there were that many. I didn't either. And so I started, when you, when you think of China, you think of China and Russia. Russia touches China. But there's five or seven countries in between there mm. that I can't even pronounce the names to. Yeah. But they, they have their own, their own distinct everything. And I'm sitting there saying to myself, you know, our diversity is so amazing that it makes us who we are. It keeps us as individuals. And I want to think of us as all these people on this on this planet that have different traditions that we just live in different places, mm-hmm. as opposed to all of us living in different countries with different traditions, different religions, trying to coexist, because that puts so many boundaries between us. Yes, it does. And, and I was one of those type of people that I didn't stand out. And I, I was trying to blend in all the time, and I realized I was standing out the whole time, and that's what made it so great. And I took a lot of I took a lot of bullying about it. And I start to see now when you pick up, you cannot pick up a magazine, you cannot turn on the television, you cannot turn on the radio now without somebody cr- claiming racism mm-hmm. um, and and everything else. And I'm like, you know something? I never thought of anybody as black or white or brown or yellow or mm-hmm. whatever it may be. I, I always see them as just a human being, and I think that. Racism is something that we are lear- that we learn over the time. It's not something that we actually are born with. Because I've seen people, these kids, they run up to people that they don't even know, and they give them hugs. They want to be with them, yep. and it doesn't matter the color, doesn't matter the the the, the sex that they are, doesn't matter what they wear. They just want to be with those people. So as we get older, we start to see things. We're, we're a little bit more standoffish because they don't conform to the way that we do things. Mm-hmm. And and the culture so in which we food. know, whether that's our family culture, whether that's our uh, neighborhood culture, our school culture, our world culture. I mean, there's so many ways in which that's identified. That's right. And, you know, there's so many radicals in there is radicalism in every single solitary uh, aspect of life. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're Muslim, doesn't matter if you're Christian, doesn't matter if you're Buddhist. There is radicalism everywhere. So we can't just say, OK, well, this person only has radicalism here. This person only has radicalism there. We all have radicalism. We must understand that. But that doesn't mean that the whole entire group of people Correct. are bad. Yes. And we also got to sit there and think about, you know, our, our religions help define us and help us understand how they come from. So to learn this is very important. Mm-hmm. And I also believe that it's important for us to realize that our diversities are what makes us so strong. And when I, and when I think about that, I think back to the Continental Congress days, because in the Continental Congress, oh, one yeah. of the <laughs> things that failed was that we were different people from different states trying to coexist. Exactly. When they said, no, we are Americans trying to, you know, co- uh, yeah. living together, uh-huh. we're taking our differences. We became one of the strongest nations in the world. And then I also started to hear that people, and, I, and I, this, this may sound funny, but I have a Spanish friend. I'm not going to say where they're from or anything. I'm not, not going to identify them, but sure. they can't stand Mexicans and they can't stand <laughs> really? Jamaicans. Now, these are two different total, two totally different people. And that's when I started realizing, you know what? Racism exists in every it single certainly does. Yes. language. And we forget about that because mm-hmm. we want to hear the main three media is white people are the only people that are racist all the way across the board. And I'm like, you know something? That's so not true. Yeah. So this is why I decided to come up with this particular series. To I want to show people how beautiful they are across the world. I want to show I want to show as many landscapes as I can that makes that that place unique. I want to take the traditional clothing that we're not used to necessarily seeing because everybody kind of wears our traditional, you know, the, the shirt, tie, the, the mm-hmm. pants. Yeah, of course. We've gotten away from that. But that's what makes them unique. I want to I, try, I want to try to incorporate traditions that, that are there. I want to try to incorporate food if I can and just 
you know, just different things that they do together. And hopefully they'll be educated enough to say, wow, we're not that different. We're just a little bit, uh, we're just a little bit, um, you know, we're just a little bit more unique. Well, you know, you think about you think about racism, racism itself. It's it's a form of hate. It's a, a form of it prejudice. Is. But when you look at, from a psychological standpoint, when you look at the six basic emotions, and nowadays they're saying it's four, but the six basic emotions, which is happy, surprised, afraid, disgusted, angry, and sad. So you mm-hmm. look at those basic emotions, and there's not hate there. Hate is a mixture of of fear and anger. And surprise. I mean, there's a, there's a, it's a combination of things. So it's not a primary emotion. So when you think of it that way, it means it's learned um, yeah. because the primary emotions are just simply all that we have. And then as life goes on, that's when we learn the complexity of the emotions. But that's not what we're necessarily born with. And I think, you know, to go to your point as well of it's something that's learned. You know, one thing I always like to tell people is when they identify someone else, I'm not talking about your situation because it was relevant. But when you talk about someone else um, and you say, oh, this person over there, this person, um, this dark skin person, this light skin person, or you know, we, when we we use a color differential to identify someone, and you know, in doing that, unfortunately, that perpetuates classes or races. And I always tell people, why can't you just say this this person over there? This person has black hair. This person has blue eyes. You know, it's using a different metric of description allows for us to remove that because if we when we identify with people or describe people if we use that race well then that is a form of perpetuating the differences between us and there's really no difference at all so it's just one little one little trick that i always have people you know maybe reframe and, and listen to that in their own vocabulary when they talk about other people exactly and you know one of the biggest examples of something like that that you were just talking about that happened to me is two places. One of them, I went to the bodies exhibit that was going through the, mm-hmm. the world here. And I got to see these people up close and I couldn't tell what color they were, what nationality they were. The only thing I knew that they were people because underside, all you saw was the muscles, the bones, the, exactly. the, the, the tendons. And that made me think, wow, you know, think of how different we, we look outside, but in, inside we're all the same. Mm-hmm. We all have those exact same things. Yeah. And then the second time I was on a, it took me a couple of times to kind of realize how the, the, the genius that was behind it's a small world at Disney. I was sitting there going through this thing many, many times and everybody's like, Oh, it's so boring just for little kids and stuff like that. I'm <laughs> like, but when I hit the, the meaning of it, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Cause when you go through, you see all the different countries, they're all wearing their, their typical clothing. And this is kind of an inspiration behind this series that i'm doing and when i went through you you hear them you hear them with their different voices you know the the, their different their different um the different um uh, languages languages yeah languages sorry and i was sitting there thinking to myself wow this is so cool you you get to see all these things but then at the end you come to this room and everything's white purple blue and it's everybody's the same color and it, it, it makes you sit there and think why is that? What country are they? And then you realize they're a mixture of every country come together, but you can't identify where they came from. Oh, wow. All you know is that they're all speaking English. They're all singing It's a Small World in English. And except for a few differences, that's the only way you can kind of tell where they're from. Wow. So that just, that just brings the whole ride together saying, look, we're all different over here. We're all unique. But in the end, we're all the same. That's amazing. Who knew that Disney was that diverse like that, <laughs> or that you encompassing wouldn't. rather? Yeah, I had no you idea. Wouldn't. And and when I when I hit that, it was like a it was like a light in my head. I'm like, wow, I need to do something like this because I think people need to understand this, and I can get it. I know they're subtle about it because there's not somebody out there doing a tour, but with me, I want to be a little bit more bold, and I want I want to take this on the road. I want people to see. I want people to learn, and I want people to to stop realizing that just because you're different doesn't mean you're bad. Yes, <laughs> or you know. And, and actually, sometimes their differences and their experiences can help you. You just don't know it because you haven't asked. Exactly. And you haven't opened up your world to, to identify what, the blind spots you have in your own life. And these other people can, can help you in so many ways. Jason, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on my show. I loved hearing about how impassioned you are about all the amazing things that you're doing. If my listeners would like to find out more information about you and all the amazing photography that you're doing and all the wonderful things you're doing, where would they find this information online? Uh, they can go to a couple of different places. There's Imagination Art Studios. That's I M A G I N E 
N-A-T-I-O-N Art Studios with an S dot com. That's my website. You can also find me on Facebook, which is Dowd Studios Art. You can find me on Twitter, which is Dowd Studios. That was my original studio name before I started accompanying uh, art into what I like to do. So you can find me there. I'm always on different places. And I'm trying to learn Instagram. I, I And I don't even worry about Snapchat. <laughs> I have no idea. How so Snapchat many works. social media. Yeah, I know. I, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> well, Jason, thank you once again for being a guest on my show today. I really appreciate you taking your time to join with us today. Oh, thank you for having me. This has been a lot of fun. And I want to tell everybody that when this airs, my Haitian collection will be out. So you can go see that on my website specifically for the show. Wonderful. Thank you once again, Jason. I also want to thank you, my listener, for joining with me today. Please subscribe to this radio show through whichever portal you joined with me. Also, please go to my website where you may sign up for my newsletter, enroll in the Lifeology Academy, watch my YouTube episodes, and read all the articles I've written just for you. If you'd like to become a guest or advertise on my show, simply visit jamesmillerlifeology.com. You may also follow me on all social media platforms under the name James Miller Lifeology, except for Twitter, which is James M. Lifeology. Have a fantastic day, and I look forward to speaking with you very soon.